what a coast. The Turkish Riviera is rich in ancient treasures and in stimuli for all the senses. It smells great. People here are courageously exploring new paths with so many surprises. The Turkish Riviera, that's hundreds of kilometers of very coastline. The region around the cities of Alanya and Antalya is one of the most famous in Turkey. It is considered a vacation paradise, even though it is densely populated in parts. Away from the centers, it is often still lonely and idyllic. Hundreds of bays are accessible only by boat and are mostly deserted. Already in ancient times, people appreciated this region because of its mild climate and fertile soils. All along the coast, you can find traces of ancient cultures and their cities. Also in the waters around the island of Kekova, there are many secluded bays without road access. And that's exactly what the business idea of Ahmed Mazili and his wife Fatma is based on. Ahmed has to really put his back into it, because the engine won't be switched on. When Fatma prepares her herbal mixture, the boat must not vibrate, and no smell of diesel must waft through the air. At least I stay in shape that way. I can only pre-cut the herbs in small quantities, otherwise they dry out. They run a floating snack bar for fishermen, sailors and tour boats. Do you want gerzlema? Yes, with spinach. Gerzlema an Anatolian fast food classic. Fatma prepares it fresh on board. Her regular customers swear by the special filling made from spinach, cheese and herbs she picks herself. Only a few minutes, the patties are baked on the plate, heated with gas. When it's windy, it's difficult. Then we can't go to certain areas. Then everything wobbles and the gas stove dies out. The fisherman is a regular customer and always orders two gözleme. Ahmed delivers free on board. Next stop, the village of Kaleköy, also accessible only by boat. Ahmed has to hurry up, portentous customers in sight. A group of kayakers. Antalya is the largest city here with more than 2.5 million people. The Turkish Riviera is located in the south of the country and stretches from Bodrum in the west to Alanya in the east. Antalya is the heart of this coast. It 
It was once a sleepy poor town, founded as early as the second century BC. The historic center has retained its charm. The narrow streets around the old harbor are completely car free. Even today, many people here live from fishing. But the fish population is in danger because for some time now, sea creatures have been multiplying that did not even exist here in the past. Mehmed Uzata is an inventor and on the hunt for the species that entered the Mediterranean Sea from the Red Sea via the Suez Canal. Mehmed's friend, the fisherman Mehmed Gugman, uses a line reinforced with steel wire. Because the aggressive fish would bite through a conventional fishing line. Five years ago, there were only a few of them here. Now, they are a plague. Silver-cheeked toadfish. Because the Mediterranean Sea is getting warmer, they feel comfortable here and they have no natural enemies. When in danger, they pump themselves up into a ball to impress their opponents. Just last week, they ate away the entire catch of fisherman Meshmet. Only a few heads and fins they left in the perforated nets. You can't get your hand on their teeth. They'll bite through anything. You can hear them crunching. They even bite through fishing rods. When inventor Mehmed read in the newspaper that a tote fish had bitten off half a girl's finger, he realized this invasive species has to go. He developed a plan. The fish can inflate. It grows big. You can see that its skin is elastic and very stable, perfect for making leather out of. Leather from toadfish. If the business idea catches on, it would make sense for fishermen to catch the invaders on a large scale to reduce the stock. The equivalent of 30 cents bounty per fish offered by the government is not enough incentive. Skinning is risky. Gloves are mandatory. This is because the toadfish is not only biting, but also highly poisonous. It contains the neurotoxin tetrodotoxin. It's therefore strictly forbidden to bring them ashore. But Mehmet has an exemption permit from the Ministry of Fisheries. The poison attacks the nervous system. It paralyzes your muscles and breathing. You feel yourself suffocating. Puffer fish poison can be a thousand times more deadly than cyanide. Inventor Mehmet spent three years working on a process to make leather from toadfish. To do this, the fresh skins have to be taken to a laboratory eight hours away in Izmir. Toadfish meat and guts are safely disposed of. For a few months, Mehmet has been testing the properties of the leather with a tailor friend. Because it is so solid, Mehmet hopes that it can also be used in industry later on, for the sheathing of electric cables, for cell phone covers, or as an additive to car tires. At the university, we did elaborate tests. This skin is fascinating because it's stronger than sheepskin and much thinner. It's almost impossible to tear it. 
At the moment, there are only wallets, handbags and souvenirs. But if the leather catches on in the industry, Mehmet's goal might just come true. Effectively reduce the population of toadfish. The millennia-old cultural treasures of the Turkish Riviera are unique. The city of Zida was a world metropolis 2,000 years ago. Hardly any other region has so many sites with ruins. This is another reason why the Turkish Riviera is a tourist stronghold. There are around 900 hotels here, 500 of which are five-star. The Adenya is a very special one with an eye-catching construction on the beach, a tangle of cords on poles around 30 meters high. This is intended to shield the beach from view later on. The hotel is still closed. The season will start in a few weeks. The perfect time for Ufuk Sechkin to inspect the areas of the hotel that he, as a man, is not allowed into later. Born in Hamburg, Sechkin operates the largest booking platform for halal vacations. The customers expect high quality material and that everything is perfect. The halal hotel is divided into women's area, mixed family area and men's area. Here there is a mosque and tea instead of disco and alcohol. We are now in the border area between the family area and the women's area, and this can be separated here by this partition wall. And in the women's area, the women can be in a bikini and sunbathe, and in the mixed area, they can wear a burkini, and they also make sure that the men wear knee-length shorts. Today, Ufuk checks the masts on the women's beach, which got new sails this year. The maritime construct is the hotel's flagship. How do you pull them up? Only when devout Muslim women are exclusively among women are they allowed to remove body and head coverings. The construction must therefore be completely opaque so that even from above, no one can see the beach. And that's why the sails are so high. That's also the privacy screen to the end of the pier. The Turkish Riviera is the region with the most halal resorts in the world, and new ones are added every year. Ufuk inspects the women's areas in particular, because they are decisive for the booking numbers. We also hear this from the male guests, that if my wife is satisfied, then I've had a good vacation. The Bera was the first halal hotel here 16 years ago. Ufuk is personally welcomed by the hotel director, Ruhat Cengish. His website earns the hotel thousands of customers every season. This is one of the reasons why he is exceptionally allowed to use the elevator, which is otherwise forbidden for men. Off to the top in the women's area, which was renovated this year. In 2021, the halal hotel industry had its record year, despite the corona pandemic. We're still covering the slides. Tarpaulins will be put over the top. I've been saying this for years, that women have to be in the management of this area, because the women's area is the most important part of our hotel, and you can't manage what you can't see. By the time the season starts, Ufuk wants to inspect as many halal hotels in the region as possible. He still has a long way to go.
Lucian Sarcophagi. Around the island of Kekova, there are sites in and around the water, also the ruins of a mostly sunken city. This probably used to be an ancient excursion place until an earthquake destroyed everything and parts of the city sank into the sea. Snack rower Ahmed spied potential customers. Do you want Gerslimer? This boatsman is amazed there is Gerslimer on the sea. The village of Kalako on the edge of the sunken city can only be reached by boat. The restaurants here are still closed. You had pre-ordered Gerslema? Okay, I'll finish it. For 10 years, Ahmed and Fatma have been supplying the people in the impassable region with their freshly baked filled pancakes. Of course, it's more comfortable to do something like that on land, but by now I've got the hang of it. And if you do something from the heart, it doesn't matter where you do it. The distribution of tasks is clear. Fatma is the chef. Ahmed, captain and waiter. The customer loves the look of it and asks for the price. I get up early every morning, I prepare the boats, then I'm responsible for the orders. Sometimes we get in each other's hair about the fact that I'm the boss. But that's okay. He's a help to me and does his part. Ahmed has to get back to the oars. The ship's diesel remains off. Thank you. How much are they again? They're a little more expensive again because everything has become more expensive. 20 liras. Really? Now I'm even picking them up myself and you're still increasing the price. You know the situation. Yes, OK. I hope you make good money. Have fun at work. See you next time. 70% inflation compared to the previous year. Price increases are a huge problem in Turkey. It's all very difficult and it has affected us as well. Especially when I sell to regular customers or friends, it's hard to take the new prices. Really not easy. I'm coming. I want Gözleme. Another regular customer. Fatma already knows what he takes. I saw you and I was so happy. Will you make it as always? A sweet one and one with herbs, spinach and cheese? Fatma has three varieties on offer. Herb, cheese, spinach, potato and a sweet one with chocolate. I'll come to you. Ahmed's dinghy is the guest room for those without their own boat. 
Make sure they don't get cold. If you had Ayran, that would be perfect. The water is great. Your gözlemi are great. It's nice that some things stay the same. Ahmed can take a breather. For the journey home, he can finally start the ship's diesel engine. Tomorrow, they will again sell filled flatbreads among idyllic bays, sunken houses, and lishy and rock tombs. On board the pirate ship Big Kral, it's all about the perfect decoration. Menderes Akdemir and his team are in the middle of preparing for the season. Tuning is always a special challenge. What we are doing this year is unique. There'll be no other ship where they can do it so well. We do everything ourselves. Unique items. The Big Kral, Big King, is once again set to become the most spectacular excursion ship of the season, and the competition is fierce. An entire fleet is made fit in this shipyard in the town of Manavgat alone. Excursion boats with a pirate look have developed into an industry of their own on the Turkish Riviera. And the Big Kral is the largest in the entire region. Four decks for up to 400 guests. This is the entrance area. Here we have a restaurant with its own kitchen. And in the back, we still have the toilets. This year, the party area on deck two will also be spruced up, including a foam-spitting shark. It should be more lively to spice up the whole thing again. We have to keep the party going, no matter whether it's full or less full. In four weeks, everything will be ready. Then you'll see. They've already started next door. The Haram Maldiv starts today with the first tour to the Mediterranean. Without a pirate look, no real competition for Menderes. I'm honest. The friends don't have many guests on board. I always say, in a month's time, it'll really start. And when we start, they can lie around and take a siesta. Menderes studied tourism and launched his first small pirate boat here 16 years ago, after watching the movie Pirates of the Caribbean. Then, according to his version, everyone else followed suit. The search for personnel is a matter for the boss. Today, Menderes wants to cast the crew and the captain for the coming season together with the shipyard owner. The first candidate applies for a job as a simple pirate.
It's much more important that you grow a beard. Your hair must also grow longer. And you have to put on a costume. You must not be embarrassed. Why don't you shout? And then with a beard, whoever works here has to be open to everything. He should look like a pirate. And even if it's frowned upon by some, we wear earrings here. The Bay of Olympos is named after a village founded more than 2,000 years ago in the then Lycia. The coast is shrouded in legend. In ancient times, the god of fire and volcanoes was worshipped here. The mountainous landscape around the almost 2,400 meter high mountain Olympos, today called Tartali, characterizes the area. Here, a sport is becoming more and more popular. And it's quite dangerous. Climbing on the rocks, which are up to 100 meters high and drop steeply into the sea. I still see too many stones. Jeanette Celik does deep water soloing. She climbs even the steepest rocks without a rope, carabiner or harness. It's good here, I think. Many climbers use safety equipment, but Chinette and Ekin have only one safety net, the sea. If you fall, you can hurt yourself on the rocks. But bad accidents can also happen with rocks underwater. We have to take all that into account in case we fall somewhere. Their destination today is a rock plateau about 10 meters above the ground. It's the start of the climbing year. According to legend, whoever scrambles as high as possible here at Olympos and then jumps into the 15 degree cold water will be lucky for the rest of the season. Jeanette already has the first seven meters underneath her. Be careful with your left foot. <laughs> the tip came a little late. <laughs> that was just exciting. It was as if I had never been in the water all my life. A completely new feeling. Ekin makes it to the rock plateau. Shared happiness for Ekin and Chenet. That should be enough. Where the Turkish Aegean meets the Riviera is the city of Bodrum. For centuries, it was the stronghold of a special kind of diving, sponge diving. Today, monuments commemorate the brave divers and the sponges. Sponges from the sea used to be a sought-after luxury item 
until they were replaced by cheap plastic products. Today, there is only one sponge diver left in Bodrum. Mehmet Bash started when he was 15 years old. And still, sponges are his passion. One day, his house will become a museum, a sponge museum. Mehmet once again had a special idea for his collection. This is my favorite creation, the most beautiful thing I have made in my life. What else should a sponge diver hang on the ceiling? Of course, something like this. The 72-year-old still goes out once a week, just as he has done for 57 years. These days, his son prefers to be there, searching for the perfect diving spot. The harvesting of sponges is now prohibited. They are considered endangered. In Bodrum, only Mehmet is allowed to harvest them from the sea. We can stay here. Engine off. Sponge diving is considered the oldest form of diving. According to tradition, long before Christ, people were already taking sponges out of the sea. But warming and pollution are taking their toll on the ecosystem. The first sponge Mehmet finds has already died. He has to keep searching. A boatyard from the Seljuk period, 800 years old. The city of Alanya is also full of history. Their ancient fortress was considered impregnable for centuries. The steep cliffs of the 250 meter high peninsula form a natural wall. Today, large hotel complexes extend around Alanya. The start of season. In the Halal Hotel Adenya, the sails are now set in conformity with Islam, as a privacy shield for the women's speech. The season also starts today in the Bera Hotel. The water slide for women is covered with tarpaulins in time. The opening takes place on a very special day, at the end of Ramadan. Today is the sugar feast. <laughs> The morning prayer at 6.30 a.m. in the hotel mosque is said by the hotel's own imam. Ufuk Sechkin, the operator of the largest booking platform for halal holidays, also came. The bearer is almost fully booked with 700 guests. If you can then share it with a hundred people, 
That's a different feeling than sitting at home or being in Germany or France. Not all the acquaintances or relatives are there. You can only celebrate in a small circle then. It's different doing that with many people in the hotel. You don't know them, you just approach each other and congratulate each other. It's different. The women's area on the roof will open in two hours. The staff here must be female without exception. Dress rehearsal with the animation team. For starters, there will be archery and darts for the guests. Everything is included here. Islam compliant entertainment, juices, tea and coffee galore. Only alcohol is not available. This family from the Netherlands has been coming for years. Daughter Zabria wants to go to the roof for archery. In the women's area, she even has to hand over her cell phone no image is allowed to leak out. Um, I just can swim uh, without my hijab. Uh, there are no men, uh, there are no phones allowed, so it's really safe. And I can do my uh, salah, I just can pray when I want. No one is looking at me like, what is she doing? Um, everyone is here Muslim, so I just can be myself here. From here on, cameras are forbidden and men anyway. For those who prefer to spend the day with the whole family, there is the mixed pool area, a theater, game rooms, cafes and restaurants. Halal vacation is not a restrictive, serious vacation where you pray all day, but it's about freedom. It's about having fun, resting with the family, but in an environment that is Islam friendly. By the way, non Muslim guests are also welcome in halal hotels. The big kraal is ready to go. Menderes has nine of his own buses pick up the guests from the surrounding hotels. He has also found a captain with international experience. Yes, please, good morning, welcome. Right side, left side to the top. They sold almost 300 tickets for the first tour. Only that thing with the beard hasn't quite worked out yet for some pirates. But the big trial has been in use for a few months now. Enough time to let the beard grow. The season has begun, despite the difficulties with the Ukraine war. Our start is not bad, unlike with many of our competitors. Now I'm excited and happy. For the captain, it's been a lifelong dream. A captain of a pirate ship. The tour lasts seven hours. The fact that tourists from Russia and Ukraine are not coming is indeed a big problem for some competitors. Menderes' target group, however, is the English, Germans and Turks.
the foam shark was also finished in time. Menderes takes 30 euros per person, including lunch and non-alcoholic drinks. Next year, he wants to do even better. He has recently commissioned a new ship. There's room for 400 guests. On the new boat, a thousand people will have room. It will have one more deck and it'll be ready in a year. The new ship will probably also be called Big Kral. And one thing is clear, by then at the latest, all pirates will have to wear beards. Finally, a living sponge. A small specimen, nothing for the sponge museum. But Mehmet still has a few regular customers for natural sponges. Sponge diving hasn't really been worth it for a long time. But he is the last sponge diver. With him, the tradition will end. So it's especially hard to stop. He's dived 25,000 hours in his life, which is about five years. I also call him the gill man. Whenever he goes down, I get a little worried. For their typical beige color, the sponges must first be laboriously cleaned. But even fresh from the sea, they have a charm of their own. It smells so great. You have to smell it too. So great. It's nourished us all our lives, gave us life, so to speak. I love to dive, and after I dive down, I feel like a butterfly. The happiness hormones flow through me, and I float through the water. And that's just the way it is here, on the Turkish Riviera, the coast for all the senses.